Hey, this is Dino. I want to show you Verify API key and how it works with custom attributes. So as you know, Apigee has uh, the concept of custom attributes and you can attach these to entities that are under management in Apigee like an API product, a, an app, a developer. Even within an API product, you can attach custom attribute to an operation. So let's have a look uh, inside the API product. Uh, I've got um, a custom attribute defined. Uh, I'm calling it limit X, and I just attached a value of 14 to that. Uh, I also have an operation defined for this API product on the verify API proxy, uh, verify API key proxy, and that is uh, just a get on slash T1. And I put a custom attribute there too. Um, operations are sort of a newer feature inside the API product in Apigee, but you can attach custom attributes there too. Um, and it's also possible to attach custom attributes to uh, apps. So I've got an app here, uh, verify API key, app one or back app. And um, I've got a custom attribute on that. It's called limit Y at 87. So we've got two custom attributes on the product, one um, limit X on the product for 14, one limit Z on the operation, it has value 456, and then we have a separate custom attribute on the app called limit Y. Let's see how those show up. Uh, you know, if we're doing it right, all of these are going to appear in the um, context via context variables uh, when the API proxy runs and we can use the debug facility in Apigee to see that. So here's the API proxy. It's pretty simple. Um, the main thing that we want to, this is just an ex existing proxy that I had. It's, it does a bunch of things, but the main thing um, I wanted to show is just the, the behavior of verify API key with respect to these custom attributes. So this one um, will take the API key as a query param, and that query param is just called API key. Uh, so pretty simple. Let's go to the debug tab and turn on trace. So I don't need that. Uh, we'll just start a debug session. And uh, the API key I want to send in is, is that one, corresponding to that app that I showed you. So we get the response back. And um, if I just highlight that verify API key policy in the transaction, you'll see all those um, custom attributes appear as context variables in the message context. So limit Y is 87. That's the thing that's attached to the app. Uh, scrolling further down, limit X, that's the thing that was attached to the API product. There is the context variable name for that one. And you can see the value for 14. And then the, um, the custom attribute that's attached to the operation is uh, 456, is limit Z, that's the name of it, and the value is 456. Um, so that's basically how uh, custom attributes can, uh, can work. Um, then in subsequent policies in this API proxy, I can, I can rely on those custom attributes, whether it's for things like rate limiting or routing or some other conditional behavior. Um, any of that can be driven by custom attributes on the product, on the app, on the operation, and so on. So really nice facility. Um, there is one thing that you should be aware of, and that is caching. So if I send a subsequent request in, uh, we'll see that in the debug, and I'll see similar values for um, my verify API key. If I select that transaction again I see the values 87 456 and 14 but what happens if I change one of those values so very quickly let me just change the limit Y value from 87 to 66 and I'll save that now the app has been updated um, the proxy still being traced I, I haven't changed anything in the proxy let me just invoke it again and what we'll see is the, um, the cached value of those attributes will probably still be showing up. And sure enough, there is my limit Y. It's showing 87. Even though I've updated the app to have 66, 
The reason for that is these things, these custom attributes, and in fact, all the information associated to the API key and the app is cached in the Apigee runtime in the cloud for some period. Uh, usually that period is three minutes. So what that means is when you update an entity like a product, an app with uh, some change, whether it's to a custom attribute or otherwise, uh, those changes don't immediately propagate to the runtime because of the, the caching. If I wait long enough, and send in uh, an additional transaction, um, we should see that being updated. So I don't know if it's been three minutes, but let me send another request. And yeah, judging from how, f how quickly this ran, I think uh, it's not, um, it's still reading from cache. And you can actually see, let me, let me just show you the first transaction here. If I select uh, verify API key, it's, it's pulling that 87 and now the, the most recent one, uh, everything's running a little faster, but it's still pulling the 87. Um, let me just wait a few moments and then we'll run another transaction. You'll see the cache updated. Okay, so uh, I've just run another, the same transaction and now you can see that that uh, custom attribute has updated. The, the cache has been refreshed. Um, so we do see the update. So that's just something you should be aware of. There's a, there's a cache of these things. So that's it. That's how Verify API Key uh, interacts with custom attributes on the app and on the API product. Uh, and just keep in mind that caching thing. Hope this is helpful. Uh, till next time, keep it digital.